Rags to riches. Recently, I was watching a Robert Kiyosaki video on how the victim has become a very popular narrative, especially in America. So I decided, wouldn't it be nice to revisit some very spectacular rags to riches journeys and give you some metaphors that you can take into your own life, look at your own hero journey, and to pat yourself on the back for even being willing to go down the path less traveled. So this takes me to a very exciting moment in my time when I had an opportunity to attend a Conor McGregor MMA fight in Las Vegas. Now, I didn't really know anything about Conor McGregor at the time. I actually am not very much into contact sports and I've never really enjoyed watching people beat each other to a pulp. However, <laughs> one must really have an appreciation for someone like Conor McGregor that can call it and then deliver. And I think we can all look at our own lives and say, man, I really wish I could have followed through on the goal, the activity, the objective. Just showing up, according to Woody Allen, is 80% of success. So I would like to share with you my experience at that very brief yet exhilarating 13 second knockout by Conor McGregor in Las Vegas against Jose Aldo. First of all, we get to Las Vegas and I hadn't been to Vegas in probably 15 years. Now, if you're a Las Vegas fan or a Las Vegas promoter, you're probably not making a lot of money off of me. However, this was a really great opportunity for me to visit Las Vegas and have a whole new experience of what I had created Las Vegas to be as a perception in my mind. So we get to Las Vegas and the whole environment is buzzing. The entire town is crazy with this MMA fight because Conor McGregor has stepped out and made a very bold statement and has said that in the first 12 to 13 seconds, he's going to put the fight to rest and he's going to win. We got to the stadium and there was other fights leading up to the fight. So I, I had an opportunity to sort of get into the groove as to what this was really all about. I'm not going to tell you exactly how that knockout went down. Instead, what I am going to share with you is how it was created from an internal process. After all, wouldn't you like to be able to take that kind of an experience and be able to apply it to any area of your life and create the outcomes that you would like to create? So what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to unpack the strategy behind the execution so that <laughs> no pun intended, so that you could actually take that strategy and internalize it for yourself and apply it to work goals, business goals, relationship goals, health goals, anything in your life basically that you would like to be able to set a desired outcome and then know in your heart of hearts that you're going to deliver on it so that you can actually go through the experience of delivery. So essentially, I've been studying a lot of interviews by Connor and journalists asking him all sorts of questions about his life and how he got to where he is today. I have to tell you, I really, truly admire the guy because he went against the grain of so much programming and so much conditioning in spite of all the flack he took, in spite of all the resistance that happened, in spite of all the naysayers and non-believers that just absolutely thought he was crazy. And then there's all the people that just didn't even know that being beyond the current paradigm, belief system, value system, 
community rules, societal rules, cultural codes could even quite possibly go to this limit. Interestingly enough, these are the same people that celebrate him today, and isn't that always the way? I think the biggest challenge that most people face in their life is nobody really wants to be around someone who doesn't own their power. And there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is most people want to be around someone that is solid, that is strong. You know, my favorite word is sovereign because there's a sense of strength to that. There's a sense of power to that. And it actually helps inspire our own strength, our own power from within us. However, when we're around people that are weak and seem to be sort of down and out or disconnected from who they are, or disconnected from their power and their potential, we're afraid that's gonna rub off on us. And so nobody likes to be around someone that's struggling. So if you're seen to be as struggling, people have a tendency to shy away from you and not really want to spend any time with you. However, the minute you rise up and overcome all of your circumstances and become the hero, everybody wants to rub elbows with you and suddenly you have an entourage of people that are championing you. So how do you take this life that is not working for you and not delivering the results that you want and actually turn it into a rags to riches experience. So if you look at any of the people in the world that have achieved great things, if you could interview them and hear what it is that they do inside of themselves, you would find that there's a huge correlation. In fact, it's almost like they're all saying the same thing. And essentially what that is, is it's broken down into the internal strategy that you're running with yourself. You see, we take in life through our senses. And if you're not aware that you take in life through your senses, this is going to be your number one growth point right here. We experience life through sensory acuity and that sensory acuity includes what we see, what we hear, what we feel, both intuitively and tactile, and then what we say to ourselves, our auditory digital, also known as our self-talk. And this is the greatest gift that makes up a child. Children know how to use their imagination. It's really their main form of function. Everything a child does comes from within. It comes through their imagination. And it's only through the programming and the conditioning that they receive from their parents, their older siblings, their teachers, nannies, coaches, churches, social environment that starts to condition them away from being highly connected to their imagination. When you start to connect to external influences rather than staying connected to your imagination, then suddenly you start to measure yourself and weigh yourself against what's going on outside of you. And I feel that this is where the first kind of introduction to the wrongness of you, this notion that there's something wrong with us, actually gets born and triggered. And then of course it gets played out depending on the relationship dynamic that we have with ourselves. If we have a good sense of self-awareness, we can actually say, no, that's fine for them, but that is not what works for me. Or I'm able to say no to this peer group. I'm able to say no to this idea. I'm able to say no to this program or social conditioning or environmental circumstance and actually create my own and be very comfortable with that. 
not everyone is able to maintain that for themselves. And so as, as we become adults, we have a tendency to be shut down and disconnected and really unable to calibrate to our higher self or inner being, depending on the words you want to use. And if you can't calibrate to your higher self or your inner being, you can get pulled off your path through the relationship dynamics that you have in your life. I would like to do a whole video on the impact that this can have in terms of taking you off your course. Because when people are projecting very strongly their ideas, their ideals, their perceptions onto you, and you aren't able to make the decision to not accept those projections, then you may have a tendency to get pulled off your path and swept up in those projections and kind of lose your way. You just kind of lose your way. And we can lose our way in life for days, weeks, years, decades, in fact. So this is what I've learned from watching a lot of interviews on people that are real serious movers and shakers, as we might call them, that have gone from very, very limited, challenging, difficult, unresourceful circumstances to being thrivers in their lives in their way, not in a way that fits into the status quo, but in their way on their terms. And here's how it works. So earlier I started telling you that we have these internal processing tools and they're what's called our senses or our sensory acuity. And this manages to really filter down whatever life is coming at us in terms of information, experiences, sounds, sights, colors, energy, of course, uh, and maybe even what we're touching, feeling, you know, the different like fabric or materials, etc. And this, this sensory acuity that we have comes at us in such massive quantities because 24 seven, we are being bombarded with information. And if it's not coming from our devices, it's coming from conversations we're hearing. And if, if, if it's not coming in that form from outside of us with, with actual people present, is coming from energy and it becomes a program. It becomes a conditioning that says you can't do this. When we perpetuate what's not working, when we focus on the negativity, the impossibility, the hardship, the struggle, the past, <laughs> then what ends up happening is it expands, it gets bigger, it becomes more pronounced. If you know anything at all about the law of attraction, whether you believe in it or not, know this one thing, whatever you focus on expands. You can focus on the negative and it will show up more in your life than you can even measure. Conversely, you can focus on the positive and the possibilities and it will show up in your life in more ways than you could ever possibly imagine. Now the key to being aware of what's going on with your sensory acuity so that you're not tapping into the struggle, the hardship, the difficulties is to really stay in present time. This is the key to everything. Changing your focus from looking at what didn't work, from looking at what went wrong, from looking at 
what didn't turn out the way you wanted it to and training your mind to focus on what it is that you're creating in the here and now and really truly be present with your energy first, then your thoughts, then your emotions. You can then make very pivotal decisions about the action that you're going to take in an aligned sort of way. So what did I learn from this MMA fight in Las Vegas was that in order for Conor McGregor to call out, this is how I'm going to win this fight. He first went internal. So before he took any kind of action or got verbose about it, he had lived it internally to the point where he owned it. He knew it. And that is even bigger than believing because knowing something, being in a state of knowingness is way more powerful than believing something. So he said, you know, he visualized it. He, he described the feeling of it. He knew the sounds of it. Being in that auditorium and hearing the crowd and the experience of the, the intuitiveness, the feeling of knowingness has an energy all of its own. And this is before we're even talking about the physical aspect of the how, the doing. So can you see that when you say, I don't know how, and that blocks you and keeps you from taking action and keeps you from moving towards your goal, how you're actually cutting yourself off from your greatest possibilities. Because it's really about getting in touch with that end goal from a sensory acuity perspective. See yourself living it. Feel what that feels like to be surrounded by this experience that you're a part of because you're driving it, because you're creating it, because you're living it and then get the tactile kinesthetic. Like, is there a feeling to it? Is there a fabric? Is there some aspect to it that you can actually physically put your hand on and feel is, you know, maybe it's the feel of the award in the palm of your hands. Maybe it's the feel of shaking the hand of the person that's handing you the trophy or the recognition, hear the sounds of the applause, hear the cheers of everyone around you, including yourself. What would you be saying to yourself? What would it sound like to be and feel like to be jumping up and down and, and saying, woohoo, I did it. This is it. I created it. I said I was going to do it and it's done. Get into that whole sensory acuity mindset. Rehearse it, practice it until you own it, then take action. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Do go over to my website. My next Mind Mastery Revenue Accelerator Masterclass is coming up. And I would love to have you be a part of it. And I'll teach you all of these tools in depth and you can use them forever in every area of your life. My name is Deborah Peters and I look forward to seeing you really soon.